Hello and Happy New Year. Thank you for joining me today in the studio. It's lovely to have your company. I can see some of you are already logging on already. So this is, um, I'm in the How to Craft Network. Let me introduce myself, anybody who's not met me. My name's Simon Williamson and I'm here from Avago Ink Designs. And I'm here to give you some lovely inspiration with the Avago products uh, and help you on your way to creating your own little mates and cards. So that's what I'm here for today. So let's just um, catch up with who's logged on already. So we've got Irene on, Brenda, Tracy. Hi, thank you for joining. Uh, Happy New Year to you all. Um, it's lovely, isn't it? It's, I, I do like these little Monday crafting sessions. I've got to say I've missed them over Christmas, so it's nice that we're um, all back together crafting again. So just so that you know with our products, um, the lovely products that we've got here as well, there's three ways we can find them as well. So I'm just going to run through that for you so you've got the information. So there's three ways you can find the products on the show. If you're watching live, they'll be directly below on the actual um, website page. So you can actually browse through them and shop them into your basket if you want to. If you're watching on the catch up link, then you can press the show, the show button on the website and that'll take you through a link of all the products that have been on that show as well. So that's brilliant. But we've got a new addition to the screen as well. You've noticed we've got a little code down there. Can you see that little QR code? It says scan to shop, use code shop2. If you scan that on your camera, it'll take you to a page and you put in the code shop2 and it'll take you straight to the video and the products that have been featured on that program as well. So we're trying to make it a bit easier, but sometimes you just want to watch the demonstrations and not have to worry about writing all the codes and the names down. So don't worry, you'll always have access to the products that you've seen demonstrated. So hopefully that helps it for you. That's three easy ways to find the products from each show. So let's get on with the first demonstration, I think. First one of the new year. And I thought I'd go with our latest collection, Game On. So this one here is going to show you how we can use strips of that background stamp just to give a really good kind of card. Um, pulling it together, a bit of monochrome and a bit of colour as well. I just thought this was a nice easy one if you wanted a bit of uh, background, a bit of difference. So let's get started with this one. How are we all anyway? If you've got any questions, just put QQQ at the beginning, I can see them. But it's lovely to see you on and Happy New Year. I hope you're all having a great start to the year. So the first thing I've got is a piece of white stamping card, which I'm going to put into here. And I've got part of our big backgrounds, which is the Game Over one. So there's three stamps in this pack. This is the one with like the little retro um, gaming machines on in the start. Um, game Over and the little flashes and things like that. So you can see there's quite a few images in there. So let's get that on there. Now, I'm not bothered about them lining up as I go. I just want to give three sections printed on here. So we'll get one down there. Just close that. Give that a push down. I'm going to use black ink for this bit. Give that a good push down. That's brilliant. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to do that three more, uh, two more times so we've got three sections. So I'm going to move that up to there, pop that down, print it in black again. Did um, Santa bring you all that you wanted for Christmas as well? I got loads of crafting goodies, I've got to say. What else would you expect, really? Just move my magnet down a little bit. And then we'll do this one more time at the top. Just so I can get them three sections on there. Let's so can see we've got some people watching us on Facebook and YouTube, so welcome. Take that out of there a second. Ooh, let's move that piece of card out there. So I've got my three little panels in stamps. You can see I could have made these join up to make a complete background, but I wanted to give a bit of variety to this. So I'm going to bring up the um, chopper that I've got. And what I want to do is cut these into one inch strips. I'm just going to take the top off this first one. So we've got a starting point. Pull that out. And I can just use the one on this other side here. Push that through. 
I'm going to keep going down this so we've got our sections. There'll be two strips. Just chop the top of this one off. It's just easier making it line up, isn't it? So you don't need it to. Push that through again. Get rid of that bit so we don't need that bit. And. And one more strip. This is a fiddly one, this one. I'm just trying to hold it with this finger. There we go. There we go. So we've got six one inch strips, which we might not need them all, but we might as well be prepared for it. So I've got those there. And you can see that we can arrange them how we want to. I quite like them where the actual pattern kind of continues. You can see the um, like games machine there. So we'll have a games machine on the next one and then one of those and there we go so i've already created a background piece of cards um to use a actually as a base and this is four and a half by six and a half uh, i know this works well so let's um glue these in position i think the best thing to do is start with the top and the bottom and get them evenly spaced and you can work out the other ones so you get a nice kind of um a mix between them so Trace says, I got some alcohol pens. I got some stamps from my lovely friend. Oh, and that's the thing when you're a crafter, you can't really get a bad crafty present, can you? So let's have the first one down here. And I know that that's going to go there. So let's just have a quick look, see if I'm going to use five or six. I think we're going to go for five. So what we'll do is we'll put that one out of the way and we'll put this one at the top. I'm going to use glue on these. You could use tape runner if you prefer, but I just thought this would be a faster way and I can make sure it's secure. That's that one. And then we need a retro one in the middle. So let's do that one next. What else did you get from Father Christmas then? I'm sure you all got some good crafty stash. And then we can now fill in the middle layers with these. And then that way you're going to keep your space in exactly where you need it. So that one can go there. And this last one, I'm just going to put in this um, black section down here. And I've done these perfectly kind of space. I can get a nice kind of grid formation going up and down the page. But it is quite nice as well to increase the actual gap. So it goes really tight at the bottom, wider at the top. It kind of gives you, draws you right up the page as well. So it's a little bit different if you want to try a different kind of method on there. So I'll just give that a push down, make sure that glue is grabbed. And I'm just going to use my scissors now. I'm just going to trim these edge bits off. So I'll turn it over and we'll just follow this with the scissors. We can use the black card as a guide. Turn it around. Get rid of those, we don't need them, they're rubbish. So I like to build my card as we go in. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to bring in my card blank. I've got a very uh, vibrant background, just some rainbow paper that I found. And I think that gives it a nice border. You can see just a nice kind of colourful border around the edge. So let's glue that onto there. Made sure my glue was working today. It would play me up at Christmas, weren't it? There you go. So we've got some nice kind of light colour around the edge now. I'm going to put this onto our actual card blank as well. So we've got a nice kind of white board as well, bringing it all back together. So I always try and make um, the colours pull back together and it seems to work better, more pleasing, isn't it, to look at. So let's pop that on our card blank. There we go. So 
We've got a really nice background there. You can see that it's got all these little kind of like words going through it and it gives us a good um, base to put our actual main element onto. So we're going to get our main character um, printed out now, which is um, Crash. This is the um, stamp set called Crash. And it's got that big image of that like male in like the circle. So we're going to stamp him out. So let's get in there. Ooh, put the magnet on. And we'll also stamp out a sentiment while we're doing it. So I'm going to use a smile one. There's a selection in the actual stamps. So I think we had a happy birthday, have a nice day, smile. But I'm going to go with a smile one for this card. Let's pick those up. Black ink again. Just give that a good pat and make sure we get all the detail. You can always go back in the accounts we're on this stamping platform. Just need a little bit more ink. And there we go. We've got our character there now. It's such a good size though, isn't it? It really is. It's a big stamp. But it um, fills your card really well, and that's what we want, a nice, easy card. So, I normally watercolour down, so I thought, you know what I mean? Let's try some few more techniques. I brought some um, alcohol markers in this time. So, let's add a bit of colour. Now, because we've got the rainbow border going around our card, I thought, let's use, like, a variety of rainbow colours as well. It'll pull it all back in. So, let's um, start off with some... Let's have a think. Let's give me some blue hair, I think. So I tend to go with a matte colour first. I'm not too careful with the first layer, if I'm honest. I just kind of get that colour down. And I always like his T-shirt to match his hair. I don't know why, but... I think it looks cool. <laughs> so, just get some colour onto this character. I've got a slightly darker blue as well, so we can give a little bit of shading. So, all I do is tend to just go around the areas that I know are a bit darker. So, just behind his arm, and then under these flicks in his hair. And because the alcohol, they will dry back a little bit paler, so we'll just leave it like that for now. And we can always go back and add a bit more colour if we want to. So let's give him some more colours now. So let's have... I think we'll have this um, ring red, because I think it's a really nice colour. It makes him pop. We'll just continue that around. Tracy says, oh, Brendan says, Tony Magazine's kit from my sister, lovely gift. Do you know that magazine that Tony's on is amazing, isn't it? It's got so many things in it. It's such a good value for money. Um, I'd imagine a lot of crafters have received that this Christmas. I think she's doing another one as well, isn't she, soon? I'll just drag that red around the other way. And then I've got a slightly darker red just to add a bit more tone. So just, just in these little corners, just to bring it up a little bit. There we go. I think we'll have some red earphones. And then let's have a jacket. So should we go for a purple jacket, I think, just so I get some more colours into this. There we go, let's get that purple in. I quite like little white bits as well, so I think it kind of adds to it like being um, hand done as well. Doesn't have to be too perfect. 
But you use the medium that you prefer. If you want to paint, you can do. Just turn it around a little bit. And we'll just do this sleeve. Tracer, she doesn't have this collection yet. Oh, you need this collection, Tracer. I think it's right up your street. I've seen some of your cars lately and they look really nice. And then let's have a think. Let's have a bit of orange, I think. And we'll just give him some orange shades. I'm just going to put a little bit more orange onto his earphones just so he coordinates in. I'm going to do two more things for this, just so it doesn't look so flat. I've got a very pale skin tone, which we're just going to just use. It's, it's quite pale, so whether you can see this on camera, I normally go a bit paler, but I tried to choose a slightly darker one, just so he's not got a white face. So... I think you should be able to see that anyway. So it just breaks his face up a little bit. And his fingers. And then I've got a very pale grey. So I've just put it on there. You can see it's very pale indeed. It's not too dark. But it was, I think it was Tony that taught me this. Does make it so it's not so flat. If you just give them a grey border, it just gives them a little bit of depth from the actual white paper. So I'm just going to just go around our main character and give them a, um, a grey kind of border. Turn him around. And I'm just going to do this side of the red hoop and just down there. You see, I don't think you can see that on camera, but it just kind of gives a bit of a slight shadow, so it just helps the actual effect. So let's have a think of this smile one here. What colour should we do this? I think we'll go for green. So I'm just going to give this a bit of a green border, just so we've not got a white border when we chop it out. So same again, I'm just going to... I don't have to be too neat on this, but I'm just going to cut this down in a second. I'm just going to take that green around the edge. Down that side, there we go look a lot better that one I've chopped it out I promise you trust me trust me right so let's um chop these out then so we've got our main character so I'm going to leave a very slight white border going around the edge but I'm just going to use my scissors they're really easy to cut out these as well so don't worry about um pussy cutting them too much so if you use pale blue or grey or lilac, it strangely makes the item pop. It's the most it does, doesn't it? I've got to say, it's such um, a clever trick. It's something I've never done until um, Tony told me um, it was quite a few years ago. But oh, we learn, though, isn't it? We learn from each other. That's what it's all about. That's why you're here, isn't it? The House Craft Network, to share ideas and inspiration. And the chat really helps because we all get to share together. I'm just going to chop around this side. We've got our main character there. And then I'm just going to chop around this smile. So just leaving a slight border. Just take that around with the scissors. I love the fact that you can interchange um, what the characters are saying. So I think it's really versatile that way. Don't forget as well, if you, um, I've got some other girl products, share your mates that you make. So I'd love to see what you guys are making as well. So I'll just get rid of those bits of card. And we'll bring in our main kind of like card now. So we've got our lovely main character, which is Crash. And he's going to go up at the top of the card there. And then we've got a little sentiment for him to be saying. So if I just pull him down a bit to the centre, I think that balances a little bit better, doesn't it? A little bit more pleasing. So let's get that position first, and then we'll finish this card off in a second. So let's get some foam pads on the back. Oh, I 
was just going to say they were behaving then. <laughs> so let's get him dead in the centre, just there. And then I need to just chop this little foam pad on here so it's a little bit taller. And we'll give it another foam pad exactly the same, just so we've got a little bit more height on this. And I've put two foam pads on so it kind of like stands a little bit prouder than this layer. So we've got like three levels. We've got the base, the character, and then the sentiment. And the last thing we're going to do to this card to finish it is we're going to pull in a few more of these colours that we've done on here. So we've got the blue, we've got the red, we can use the orange, and we've got the green. And we're just going to pick out some of these little, um, little patterns. You can see those little light stars. So we can put a bit of green up here. It just brings them colours back in. So I'm going to do a green flash down here. I'm not going to do too much because I don't want to ruin that background. But if I just add just a few flashes of these colours, I'll just finish this card off really well. So we'll have a red flash down here. A red star. Got a bit of blue on this one, I think. Just shows as well, you don't have to colour the whole background. Little flashes of colours are going to work for you. So we'll have this little cross pad there. And we'll have the blue star here. I think I just need to put a little bit of orange on and then we're finished. I like these little stars because they're really um, well scattered throughout them. It's a good little element to pick out. And I think we'll have... I think that's it. You can do too much, can't you, sometimes? So let's stop at that. So if I pull that off here now, that's our first make. First make of a new year. So just a really creative way of doing that background. Those little flashes of colour in the background just brings in these kind of rainbow borders. It just shows you how fast you can bring a card together with this new um, Game Over collection. So I hope you enjoyed that first demonstration. We're going to give you some inspiration now from the Avago brand. I'll be back here in a couple of minutes with the next demonstration, so I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Hi, my name's Simon Williamson. I'm the guest demonstrator for Avago Ink Designs. So Avago Inks is a, it's basically images that we can put together so anybody can have a go. I think I love the most about crafting is it can just give you time out in your own head. It can just down tools, not think about your mobile phone and just enjoy what you're going to do. Create a project and be proud of what you've made. My inspiration comes really from lots of sources. I love like looking at current trends. I like looking through the internet. I like looking at what other people make. And I think truly inspiration comes from picking bits out of everything you see, pull it all together and make something that you can do with your skills. Avago products, we've got three collections out at the moment. We've got as Dinosaur Range, as Farmyard Range, and as Little Owl Collection. And the main crux of the actual designs is there's a big image there, and little characters you can play around, have fun, and there's always some puns in there as well, so you can liven up the card and make it a bit humorous for everybody. I think if you're thinking about trying one of our products, is don't be afraid. Just buy any of the kits that you, I mean, you feel like you want to, and you'll always create a really good card from there. There's some good characters, good sentiments and some really fun images in there. So just, just grab one and have a go. And welcome back. Hope you enjoyed that little video of inspiration. It just shows you about the Avago, which is all about having fun at all levels so everybody can have a go together and enjoy crafting. Uh, I can see from your comments that you did enjoy that card, so that was brilliant. This next one is really different from me, I've got to say. Uh, I was watching um, Emma Blake on the How to Craft Network and um, I was like thinking, I want to try something a bit messy for once, because I am quite a clean crafter generally. I've come up with this one. What do you think to this? It's a bit grungy, this one, for me, but I thought it's just... We've all got to step out of this comfort zone. It's a new year, and I thought, let's have a go at doing something a little bit different. So this is going to use in some more stamps from the same collection. Oh, just pull this up a second. And I'll show you how we did this. So let's get started. So it does rely this on having a bit of textured card, first of all. So. I've got some of this kind of linen effect card. I don't know if you've got any of this in your stash, but it's just got kind of a nice kind of grainy texture. I don't know if you can see, oh, if I, you can see it there, look. It's got some nice grainy texture, so it means the ink pad can pick it up a little bit. So let's have a go. 
I'm just going to get a cloth ready for this because it does get a bit messy. So I've got a few of my ink pads out my stash. I've got a Distress Oxide Candid Apple, which is my red. I've also got an Eyes Ink Dye Emerald Green. And I've also brought the Versifying Claire, which is like a grey uh, morning mist. So it's a little bit softer than black, so I thought we don't need the black on this base layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the red, and this is just going to have to break this card up. So here we go, here we go. <laughs> so I'm going to brush this um, texture, but I'm not going to put too much pressure on this. I just want this red to catch this kind of grain in the card. So and I'm not bothered if it comes into the card as well. I just want some random marks going round. And I'm going to take that round there. Okay, this is me having a go, look. <laughs> Just put a little bit more on that side. Okay, so we've got splashes of red going around the outside of that card. It's all going well, it's all going well. I'm going to bring in now our stencil, which is the, I forgot what you call this, pixel pattern. This is a pixel pattern stencil, and I just thought, let's use red and red to build this up a little bit. So I'm going to bring in my sponge, but I don't want a lot on this, so I am going to just lightly dust the centre part to see if we can just dab some of that off a second. And it just breaks up that centre panel a little bit more. <laughs> Why are you all laughing? It was because I'm praying to the crafty god to, so this works out. <laughs> so you can see it's not heavy, but it's just going to break up that centre panel a little bit more for me. I'll take that around the edge. That's good, isn't it? So we've got our little kind of like computer shapes in the background. We've got our red flashes coming from the edge. And this is a bit where I've got to be honest, I thought, I don't think this is working. But I, I mean, as Tony always says, carry on. And I did. So I added the next colour, which is going to be the eyes ink green. And I started off by just edging this just to take the redness off it. So not as far into the card, but I'm just going to just green the edge up a little bit so it makes it a little bit more rustic. Taking that all the way around. And that has another layer to it. So we're now starting to make it a little bit darker around the edge. Gives it a little bit more depth than the tape. So then I thought, what else do we need to try? So let's bring in, we just get a stamping block. I'll just borrow this one. So I've used this grey because I didn't want it to stand out too much. And I'm going to just do the words going down the side here. So just press down. If it doesn't quite grasp it, I'm not bothered. I just want kind of an impression of them words going down this column here. So same again. One more tight. You could have a little bit more there, so let's put that there. That's fine. And the rest of it, I've got to be honest, I just had fun with. So what we did is I did a few of these little symbols from this stamp. So I've got a little light knife and fork, the bed, the controller. I'm just going to literally pick up some ink and push them down ever so often. So not too many of them. I just wanted to get some of those on my card. That's that one. And I've got this lovely background stamp from the um, Game Over. So this is the one with like, all the like computerised like, kind of electrodes going on. And I thought, I love this, but I thought it's going to be too much to put the whole panel on there. So I'm just going to literally use my finger on the ink pad and just put some bits in ever so often, just to break this up. So... a bit more up here, I think. A bit more down there. 
I'm just going to change a bit of the stamp so it's a different area to so get a different pattern. And we'll have some coming from the edge. Top corner. And I think I just need some in this area here. So there we go. Oh, oh, it's working, it's working. It's what we want to see, isn't it? Let's move that out of the way. So now we've got kind of a messy background, which is what I want. So I want this kind of like to build up a little bit. See, I've been watching all these mixed media things over Christmas. <laughs> so let's get this mounted up first, and then I can show where we're going to put a sentiment. And you can see how we're going to finish this card off. So I've got a nice red background, which is why I put the green edge on, you see. So when you put it on there, it just pops. Kind of like brings it out a little bit more, than not it? So let's use glue on this. Let's get that all mounted on. Am I doing all right? Linda said Emma would be proud. She better be, I tell you. Then we'll mount that on there. Um, I'm loving this. I think I've done a really good job of that. So I'm going to move this to one side and we're going to work on our panel now for his main kind of element. So bring up our stamping platform. I'm going to use the linen card again because I like this texture and I think it'll look a bit odd to go to a smooth card now for the topper. So we've got that. Let's use the this one, this big topper look. I don't get old, I level up. I think this is a nice kind of topper to use on this. So let's pop that down in the corner. Put that magnet up there. I'm going to do this in black, just purely, so it actually draws your attention to the sentiment. Let's give that a good push down. Now this might, well, it won't be a complete printout because of the grainy card, but we'll see whether we need to go back over it in areas. So yes, I'm just going to give it another go, just to try and get a little bit darker on the actual controller. Give that a good push down. Do it one more time. I'm happy with that. So you can see you've got a little bit of distress going through it, but you've still got a really crisp image, really. So let's take that out of there. Oh, it's working, it's working. So I'm just going to chop this down in size now. So what we'll do is we'll just cut that down. Let's have a look how big this is. I think we'll chop it about there, I think. And then we'll chop it down there. Just chop a little bit off this bottom bit, I think. Maybe not, actually. Just a little bit off this back. Just looks a bit unbalanced. That's better. I like that. And then I need a little bit of red card. Which... Where have I put the red card? Let's have a think. Don't worry. We'll use a bit of this, because this is red and green. So we're not going to do much, I'm just going to just take it around the edge just to get a little bit of a fine kind of thing. So where do we want the yellow bit to be? Let's go downwards, I think. Let's, which way do we want this? No, we're going to go this way. I'm going to go red to the left, yellow to the right. In fact, just before I do that, I think this looks a bit too crisp. So let me just... Tone that down a little bit with that green pad. A bit like we did on that original card, just so it... I just think it looks a bit too um, crisp for this card. Now we've done a bit of a mixed media kind of messy card. Let's try again. That's better, isn't it? It gives it a border now. And I'm just going to use my scissors just to chop around this bit. 
could use your trim if you wanted to, but there we go. I'm just going to bring in some foam pads. What do we all think to that one then? It's a bit different from me, isn't it? We'll just take those off. Then we can decide where we want this. You could have it in the centre, which is a little bit different. But I do like putting the sentiment slightly further up on a card. So let's put it there, I think. And then to finish this off, you know me, I like my sparkle. So I've got some green stickles for this one. So I'm sure you've got some um, green kind of um, glitter or dots or pearls in your collection. But you can see where these little like, electrodes kind of like have the little circles at the end. I thought these are perfect just to kind of, just kind of pick out some randomly around the card. And it breaks it up and gives it a bit more dimension as well, doesn't it? Turn that around. I'll just do a few more at this side. I'm doing them in threes or fives just because I think it always looks better, doesn't it, in uneven amounts. I'll just drop just a few there. And I think that's it. Look at that, that was like a really fast card. What do you think to that one? A little bit different, a little bit messy. Different style though, isn't it? But it just shows you that, you know what I mean? Step out of your comfort, uh, your comfort zone and have a go yourself. I would have never done a messy card, but I was like, inspired by um, Emma Blake watching her channel. And I just thought, we're all allowed to have a go. So, Tracer says, anyone would like, I like stickers on you. Two after 42, I think I can beat you, Trace. I think I've got nearly every colour I've ever made. I used to collect them at one point. So that was the first card we did, and that was the second one. So that's our two makes for today. So, two different kind of styles of card, but it just shows you how versatile that game on collection is. Them characters are really, really powerful on them cards, and them backgrounds are brilliant. And I love the fact that them backgrounds, you get three in a pack and you can make them fill the whole background or you can use them individually, which it, to me is a great value for money. And don't forget, there's those three ways as well you can shop the actual products on the show. So if you're watching live, they are, they are downstairs. Just look down, they'll be scrolling below. If you're on catch up, you can um, click shop the show button and that'll take you to the website. Or if you're going to use the new um, QR code that will be displayed on the screen, and that'll take you to the um, shop the sh um, code, which I think was shop two for today's show. And that'll take you to, to the video and the products. So three ways to make it easy for you to shop. And um, don't get in the way of your actual concentration than when you craft along. So thank you very much for your time today. Hope you've enjoyed the show. I'll see you next Monday. See you later, guys. Bye.